I have something I wanted to say. But I confess I am afraid of how you will react. I am reluctant to put that to the test. But it is necessary that we are honest with each other. I know that you said you prefer to be surrounded by others, unlike me. But Constellation means something to us both. And I must be honest about why. The little I have spoken of my history has been nothing but truth. I worked with smugglers. I have caused my share of pain and suffering. What I have left out, until now, is that all of that was done on behalf of House Varun. My people. My family. They have retreated from open relations with the United Colonies and the Freestar Collective, but they still exist. I was born in the great city of Dazra, and raised with the teachings of Jinan Varun. I underwent the rite of Krijar when I came of age. I am of the promised, those who know the truth of the great serpent and his inevitable return. Thank you. I doubt many would see it that way. There is a reason that I am only just revealing this now. Several years ago, I intercepted requests from Constellation to access Varun's space, speaking only of exploration. I was sent to infiltrate Constellation, posing as a former smuggler looking for a new purpose in life. Yes, well, you were not the only one. Several weeks after I arrived, I attempted to access secure records within Constellation's archives. Vladimir and Sarah were waiting for me. Quite an understatement. I was horrified. My failure would be reported to the High Council, and the penalty would be severe. They do not. I have, for now, kept that information to myself. You and I have spent so much time together. It has been increasingly difficult to keep this from you. And I am sorry for that. Telling you this violates so many of the orders I was given. But it was the right thing to do. I can feel that. You have no idea what a relief that is. Thank you for trusting me.
I... Please disregard. I attempted an informal greeting, but I am dissatisfied with the results. About time you showed up. All right, I want to know what's going on. I've been trying to get Delgado's attention for, oh, I don't know, three years now. And what do I get? Nothing but radio silence. Then out of nowhere, just when Neva and I are closing in on a huge score of our own, Delgado orders me to help you out. Oh, sure, sure. First a tour, followed by a formal dinner at the captain's table. Let's get one thing straight. You're here for business, not for a vacation. So let's start by talking about Delgado's sudden olive branch. Because the only way to achieve a win is by agreeing to play the game in the first place. Worst case scenario, I don't make the fleet but I end up a couple thousand credits richer. That's almost a win-win, a don't you think? Well, I'll be damned. Someone from the fleet finally agrees with me about something. It's a goddamn miracle. So Neva's message said you were here for Dombrowski. Was that all she sent you here to do? Or was there something else you were sent here to steal? Don't play games with me. We both know pinging a message back and forth to the key is going to take longer than we have to do this job. We're supposed to be working together on every part of this. So, you're gonna tell me what else you're here for or not? Oh, really? Did she now? I can't believe she's trying to cut me out of this deal. Without me, the award never would have ended up here in the first place. I spent months manipulating the Turan Preservation Society to hosting their gala affair aboard the Siren of the Stars. I had to arrange the event to make sure that the award was aboard the ship. Neva said she'd do the rest. When I got a message about Dubrovsky, I assumed she'd be tagging along to steal the award. But looks like uh, she said you in her place. She told you to hold that over my head, did she? Oh, that witch. Fine, I'll help. But you're doing all the legwork, and I'm still taking my cut of the payout. Anyway, we'll get to that later. First, we have a much bigger fish to fry. So why are you targeting a gall bank exec anyway? Not exactly your average crimson fleet prey. Why the interest? Merchant vessels, transports, supply convoys, mining settlements, you get the picture. But taking on a megacorp, that's a really big deal. Something the Crimson Fleet stayed away from in the past. Sounds to me like Delgado's either getting desperate, or this is leading to an even bigger score down the road.
his credentials. So you're hitting the Gall Bank branch in New Atlantis. Nice score, very lucrative and very dangerous. If you're going after a gold mine like that, I'll want to come along for the ride. Or you're not getting near Dombrowski. It would seem we have little choice in the matter. We should hear him out. Well, well, it appears we have a mind reader here. You're absolutely right. I don't want money. I want back into the Crimson Fleet. It's as simple as that. Of course I do. But who wants to settle for a one-time payout? I prefer to play the long game. You see, getting my ass back into the fleet means I regain access to Shinya Boss. And that's as good as an endless stream of credits. All right, all right. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? Now, let's talk business. Dombrowski's a full-timer aboard the Siren of the Stars. Probably spends more time cruising the space lanes than actually working. Fortunately, the Siren is hosting the Tehran Preservation Society charity gala. Larry won't be able to resist showing off his VIP clout. To get what you need, you're gonna have to attend the gala. Talk to his fellow philanthropists and dig up some dirt. Oh no. Is shooting everyone an option? Alternately shooting ourselves to avoid it? <laughs> yeah, well lucky for you it's not black tie so you'll be fine. This card will allow you to access the Starview Ballroom. If you need my help, I'll be relaxing in one of the upper level lounges. Head inside and mingle with the crowd. No one likes Dombrowski, so they'll be more than happy to share his dirty secrets. He's a VIP executive, which means he either worked really, really hard using blood, sweat, and tears to make the arduous climb to the top, or he backstabbed, lied, cheated, and betrayed his way up the corporate ladder. From what I've heard, it's the second option. Well, you better learn quick. Oh, there's one last thing. Dryden equips all of their starliners with the latest acoustic threat detection. Meaning that you lose patience and kill anyone aboard the ship, security will be alerted and all hell will break loose. Anyway, I suppose that's enough to get you started. Good luck. You seriously need to ask? Okay, I'll give you two reasons. First, Gold Bank protects their own. Kill Dombrowski, and they send Ecliptic after every Crimson Fleet ship they can find. Not something they'll gotta want, I suspect. And second, you offer Gal Bank employee in every single Gal Bank facility in the settled systems will triple their security. I'm gonna guess that won't help with whatever your plans are regarding Galbag, now will it? They claim their goal is to celebrate the soul of the Earth, the culture, the people, and the ideals of the past. In their minds, Earth is now dead. 
which is why they feel that preservation of its remaining aspects is so important. In reality, this is what happens when folks with far too much time and far too much money get together to make themselves feel like they're contributing to society. As long as you remember that I'm getting paid my cut, I'll help you with anything you want. What's the status of your plan? I want to Nevis trip down the UC security ship and uh, sell the parts back to the UC through a shell company. If that doesn't put your concerns to rest, I don't know what will. Now tell me, what about the status of your plan? How can I help? Okay, then let me point you to the person in charge of the award. Her name's Sheila Holbrook, and you can probably find her in the Starview Ballroom. I'd press her to reveal where the award's hidden, and we can go from there. And if you're thinking of pulling the trigger on poor Miss Holbrook, remember that any gunfire is gonna set off the ship's alarms. As long as you remember that I'm getting paid my cut, I'll help you with anything you want. What's the status of your plan? Okay, then let me point you to the person. Her name's Sheila Hall. I'd press her, and if you're thinking of pull Oh, and while you're at the gala, avoid the canopies. They're frozen, not fresh. Captain Rokov is one of the most easygoing COs I've ever worked with. There's nothing quite like the view from the Starview Ballroom. It's breathtaking. Business or pleasure? That's a lovely starliner. Nothing but the best for the society. That view is absolutely spectacular, isn't it? Hello. Are you a member of the society? I so, certainly hope they decide what to brings you aboard. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Yes, I'm extremely busy preparing for the award ceremony, so this better be important. Not at all. I was assured that this particular ship was outfitted with the absolute latest and cutting-edge security. I am completely confident that Trident luxury lines will keep all of us safe. Probably in a few days. I don't want the award transfer to actually occur until we're safely in orbit at our destination. Of course, if I keep getting interrupted, the ceremony might never take place at all. Yes, I am. Actually, I've been entrusted with the transfer of the award for the last seven of its nine years. Why do you ask? During my tenure? Oh, certainly not. There was an unfortunate incident where my predecessor attempted to sell the award to the highest bidder, but that was quickly resolved. Needless to say, they'll be spending the rest of their life in a UC prison. 
Well, the Earth Savior Award is one of a kind. The Blue Diamonds alone are irreplaceable. Since we can't produce a new award every year, it's instead passed from one recipient to the next. I supervise the transfer and make certain that there's ample security during transport and at the destination. In my cabin? Oh, please. Why would I do something so foolish? I'll have you know that the award is locked inside the master safe, located at the purser's office. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have much more important things on my agenda than to speak to the likes of you. Have you tried the canopies? Horrid. Positively horrid. In the event of a lockdown, remember to return to your cabin and quiet quickly. This is not the very definition of decadence. I do not know what is. Glad to have you aboard. Welcome if to the, the rest of this ship is any indication, I Murata. imagine there is an incredible amount of assistance today. right now. I've only seen it briefly myself, but I can assure you that it's quite lovely. Unfortunately, the item is locked inside of our safe, which can only be accessed by presenting an appropriate claim ID. Is there anything else I can assist you with today? Well, if you change your mind, I'll be here. Have a wonderful trip. I'm sorry. It's against Trident policy to discuss our personal feelings towards a fellow crewmate. You do? Hmm. All right, but you didn't hear this from me. Do you understand? I don't want to lose my job. I like Captain Rokov, but I think he's mixed up with some very dangerous people. I was bringing some paperwork to his quarters one day, and I found a slate with a message he received from someone named Delgado. That would normally be fine, but the message mentions the Crimson Fleet as in pirates. Can you believe it? If you want to grab it, the slate should still be in his quarters. Somewhere. Oh, absolutely. The safe is magnetically sealed and shielded with multiple layers of fully damage-resistant, vacuum-proof plating. In an unlikely event, our vessel is boarded and the threat detection alarm is triggered. The safe will be permanently sealed until it reaches port. In the even more unlikely event, this ship is destroyed. We can assure you that your loved ones will be able to recover your goods from the wreckage. So, as you can imagine, your property will be completely secure until you decide to retrieve them from our safe. An excellent question. My responsibilities include all of the Siren's financial, customs, and commercial goods transfers. Honestly, I really enjoy the work. I get to meet people at every port of call instead of being constantly stuck below decks. Don't forget to tell your friends how much you enjoy the cruise.
Nobody Must you continue these unwelcome interruptions? I'm a very busy woman. Excuse me? And why in goodness name would I do something as foolish as that? And why in goodness name would I possibly agree to that ridiculous demand? You're starting to make a lot of sense. I'm trying to figure out how to help you. Oh, just take the damn thing already. Listen, maybe you can keep this between us. If the award goes missing, there's no need for the insurance company to get involved. Any complaints about your... Please let me know if your voyage is unsatisfactory in a On behalf of Trident Lab, please let me know if there's anything I can do to make your stay more comfortable. And I can assure you that the route is quite safe. Please remember to obey all posted safety and mustering instructions. The society chair is really outdone. Don't forget to keep your Starview Pass handy at all times. The society chair, chair has really, really outdone, outdone herself, herself this time. That view is absolutely spectacular. Hello. Are you a member of the society? Larry likes to drop overly complex words into conversations. I'm sure he knows that it annoys people, but he does it anyway. Haven't we already talked about this? I heard it's fitted with 12 internally flawless two-carat blue diamonds. Can you believe that? The Society was founded about eight years ago by Carl S. A. Worthington, a prominent businessman from New Atlantis. Don't forget to donate to the cause. So, what brings you aboard? Pleased to make your acquaintance. Have you tried Quite the canopy? Starline. Horrid. His behavior Positive towards report. women is abominable. That man really ought to be ashamed of himself. That award is such a joke. It's for members of the society to pat their own backs for spending the most money on the cause. Not much, other than the fact that they host these wonderfully entertaining gala events every month. That's all, then? Okay. Here for business? Yes, he's some kind of a top dog over at Galbank. I heard he replaced someone that was caught running a fake loan scam. This is going to be the ninth Earth Savior Award ceremony, but the first time it's ever been held aboard a Starliner. It's a shame that the Earth ended in such a sorry state. But I'm glad the Society has the nerve to do something about it. Enjoy the rest of the event.
I certainly hope they decide to hold all future society events aboard a Starliner. would have been nice, but Trident's gouging us for every credit we've got. Hmm, an open bar would have been nice, but Trident's gouging us for every credit we've got. Please, to have you tried the canopies? Horrid. Positively horrid. The considerable amounts of cash that Dombrowski donates is the only reason we allow him to attend society functions. Sheila Holbrook is chair of the award committee this year. The way she dotes over that glorified trophy, you'd think it was her own child. It's critical that the Society keeps the memories of Earth alive in our hearts. I'm doing my part by attending this spectacular event. Donations to the Society can be debited from my bank account on a monthly basis. I barely have to lift a finger to help. Nice to have met you. That view is... The society chair has really outdone herself this time. Letty has an A-level executive rating over at Galbank, which means he has access to everyone's accounts at the touch of a button. Sheila Holbrook is chair of the awards committee this year. The way she dodds over that glorified trophy, you'd think it was her own child. <sighs> Is this about that feature SSNN ran a few years ago? I can assure you, this is a legitimate charity organization. Huh. Well, that was boring. Hello? Are you a member of the society? Quite a lovely Starliner. Nothing but the best for the society, eh? So, what brings you I aboard? certainly hope they decide to hold all future society events aboard the Star. Here for business or pleasure? He's been spending a lot of time with Claudia Swist. Quality time, if you catch my meaning. I'm certain his wife doesn't know a thing about it. Sheila Holbrook is chair of the award committee this year. You don't necessarily have to be wealthy to contribute, though the minimum donation level is 5,000 credits. That's all then? Okay. Hello. Are you a member of the society? Do I know you? Okay, wait, are you seriously... Uh, are you trying to pick me up? Look, uh, I appreciate the compliment, but I'm already seeing someone. And my partner doesn't like competition. He gets very jealous. His wife? Uh, oh, for the love of God. I told Larry to keep his big mouth shut, but did he listen? No. He had to impress his friends and treat me like a trophy. Look, I've been in this business for a long time, and I know how this game works, so let's skip all the banter and get it over with. What's it gonna take to make us both happy?
If I give you dirt on that son of a bitch Dombrowski, all I'm doing is endangering myself. Why would I do that? That's true. You have come this far already. You know more about me than I suspected. Can't have that. That's true. For once, I would like to see him squirm. I should make him pay for doing this to me. All right, you've made your point. You know, this whole thing really pisses me off. Larry and I had the perfect scheme where thousands of credits all worked out, and then he goes and flushes the whole thing down the toilet. I do not understand. Your anger is focused on Mr. Dombrowski, but clearly the failure of this plan rests on you as well. If you had to work near him day in and day out, I think you'd understand. He's a disgusting pig, plain and simple. Oh, angry isn't even the right word. The plan was solid. Larry got together with myself and this other guy, Gabriel Vera. He's some big wig over at UC Security. I doctored the transactions, Larry wiped them off the system, and Vera kept the legal pressure off of us. We were scamming Galbank for months. It was going well until I discovered Larry was cheating everyone by changing each transaction in his favor before deleting them. You won't do that. You're here because you've got some kind of side hustle in the works. If you wanted to blow the whistle, you would have boarded this ship with the authorities. I was going to confront him back on Jemison, but then he invited me on this little trip through the stars. All expenses paid, first class accommodations, the works. I figured, why not wait until I've milked him for every credit he's spending before I drop the hammer? Oh, I know he was using me. At the same time, he was saying how much he loved me. He was stringing me along and stabbing me in the back. I wish I had some. Maybe you should try talking to Gabriel Vera. He should be around here somewhere. If he doesn't want to cooperate, just mention my name. That should grab his attention. Good luck. You're gonna need it. What, are you ready to damn novel? <sighs> Fine. Vera works for UC Security, so he kept a lookout on their comnet for any Galbank chatter. I guess you could call him our early warning system. And Dombrowski made sure that all of the crypto manipulation I was working on didn't turn up in Galbank's automatic audits. You need top clearance for that kind of access, so we had to cut him in, whether we liked it or not. What do you think is going on? I'm using that gullible idiot to get what I want. If I have to squash him on my way to the top, then so be it. Let's get one thing straight. Larry Dombrowski's no saint. He deserves everything that's coming to him. Yes, no judgment. But I am curious to hear a bit more. It doesn't matter if you're here to judge me or not, because there's nothing to judge. Dombrowski is a piece of human garbage. He'd stab you in the back for table scraps, then stab you again to steal dessert. The plan's always been to milk the guy for everything he's worth, and then leave him in the dust. Not bad for a lowly Galbank worker drone, right? I wrote a computer algorithm that basically creates a randomized number of false ghost credits that mimic the crypto key of actual credits. 
Then the algorithm simply passes the ghost credits to whatever legit transfers that the bank transacts. The genuine credits enter a dummy account. The best part is that I also alter the crypto keys as the real cash flows into our accounts. By the time it lands in our pockets, the credits are clean. So on paper, it appears that all of the bank's transactions are covered when it's really just our ghosted dummy creds. <laughs> Genius, right? I hope you hurt Dombrowski. Nail his ass right to the wall. Quite an event they're throwing today, don't you think? Hello. You here for the charity event? Oh, uh, I'm afraid that's a bit outside my wheelhouse. I work for UC Security, so I don't think I could be of much help. I have nothing to do with Galbank. You mean specifically? Oh, I work for the Corporate Fraud Division. We monitor all of the major megacorp financials and transactions to ensure that nothing improper occurs. You're asking a lot of strange questions. What exactly do you want? To be honest, I'm here to keep an eye on the charity event. It might not be as glamorous an assignment as a colony rescue or taking down some criminals, but anything that keeps the peace is important to me. What is this all about, anyway? Claudia sent you, did she? Look, friend, I don't know if you're just a little drunk, maybe a touch crazy, or both. Whatever you think you know about me, you're dead wrong. So back off. We both know exactly who you are. Huh. <laughs> Just in case you weren't aware, I am the authorities. Anything you try to report will boil down to your word against mine. And since I work for UC Security, who do you think people will believe? I certainly hope they decide to hold all future society. I saw your little exchange with Vera. Keep that up, and I guarantee that Embassar's gonna demand that you be arrested. Which is why he's threatening you. That makes sense. We need hard evidence of their scheme. But it's gonna be tricky. The problem is he's not gonna talk to you in public. We need to get Vera isolated so he'll spill everything he knows. Maybe. But if something goes wrong and he's able to raise an alarm, we're sunk. With all of these wealthy patrons aboard, the ship is crawling with security. Smart. If there's an emergency, standard practice is for all passengers to clear the decks and report to their cabins for lockdown. I think the best chance we have would be to tamper with the life support sensors. Manipulate a few controls and you can fool the monitoring system into thinking there's a, a life support failure. And there you have your emergency. This is one of Trident's premier Starliners. That means it has the best of everything, including a triple redundancy life support system. They installed a backup with a backup. Luckily for us, it will still trip an emergency and everyone will have to return to their quarters until I sound the all clear, which I won't. 
Your lack of commitment does not exactly fill me with confidence. Are you sure this is a good idea? Don't worry. It'll be as easy as it was mingling with the guests at the party. Just throw a few lousy switches and you're done. One more thing. If Chief Engineer Sundin gives you any trouble, tell him I'll erase that gambling debt he owes me. I prefer you use that as a last resort, but hey, what's the harm in losing a few credits when I'm on the brink of rejoining the fleet, right? Anyway, I better start packing. Things are getting hot around here, and won't be long before Trident figures out you had help. There's access to the crew section that you can reach through the uh, Starview Ballroom. Chief Sundin should be there, wasting time at his station as usual. Have fun with that guy, he's a, a real piece of work. Once you're past Sundin, just look for the room marked Environmental Control. Everything you need is inside. All passengers are instructed to immediately report to their cabins. That way, we keep the halls clear and avoid a panic. Fortunately for us, all of the passenger cabin doors will automatically unlock. This is normally to ensure the crew can check cabins quickly and without interference. But in our case, it's like having an all-access pass. On the surface, he's an upstanding citizen of the United Colonies, pretty high up in UC security. Lots of clout with mast. Underneath, he's a greedy piece of garbage. Given the chance, he'd backstab you for a cred stick and bid the murder on someone else. Come to think of it, if he wasn't such a petty tyrant, he'd probably thrive with the Crimson Fleet. Go do something useful, okay? Here for business or pleasure?
Uh, hey, uh, uh, hold up. This area is off limits to passengers. Wait a second. You're Captain Rokov's guest, right? Didn't expect to see you down here. Sorry to give you trouble. What can I do for you? Oh, uh, sorry, that area is off limits. No exceptions. All right, all right. No need to get pushy about it. Oof. Captain Rokov sure picked some weird friends. Tell you what, I'm just going to step out for a bit and stretch my legs. Maybe you can hold this for me while I'm away? I'm the Siren's chief engineer. Try to put me in charge of the entire tech team. We do our best to keep the ship running smoothly and efficiently. Of course, this beauty is a cutting-edge piece of spacecraft design. Almost everything has triple redundancy, like the life support system. Unfortunately, that means there's quite a bit of downtime. Could be worse, though, right? A little. A few of the techs call this deck the dungeon. <laughs> I think you can see why. Not exactly Starliner class comfort down here. Don't get me wrong, the quiet gives me time to gather my thoughts, catch up on work, and all that, but I'd rather work on the bridge. Honestly, he's a seasoned ship captain. He told me he was a long hauler for years, and the experience shows. Only thing is, he's always talking about trade deals and plans for get-rich-quick schemes. It's all the guy ever thinks about. Why he decided to be a Starliner captain, I'll never know. It's almost like he craves being around money. Tell you what, though, for someone that loves credit so much, he sure doesn't mind gambling them when we play cards. So? I have a lot of things to do. Uh... Whatever this is do, well maintained, anything, to be sure. But obviously the credits have all been spent on the areas the guests actually see. Much nicer in here now. Plenty of room. There's no cause for alarm. I'm sure this is just a minor malfunction. This ship is in a state of emergency. Please return to your cabin. A sharp contrast from the I was wondering if you were the about. cause of the shipwide emergency. It's time you stop playing games and tell me why you're here. You're working for Ikande's little anti pirating outfit? So what? I have nothing to do with the Crimson Fleet. 
And even if I suddenly decided to stay loyal to the old UC, why would I possibly want to incriminate myself by handing over evidence? Claudia said that. You sure? Damn it! That means my money's already gone. And Dombrowski's right, going to walk away with a fortune. I'd love to see the bastard fry. If I give you that information and it falls into the wrong hands, I could end up in jail. And remain there until you receive further instructions. At least I walk away with something. All right. You have yourself a deal. Here, with this slate and this recording to tie it all together, you'll be able to nail his ass to the wall. He'll do whatever you want. Just remember that you promised to leave me out of it. Well, since Claudia has been spending time disgustingly close to Dombrowski, I think she's suffered enough. On the other hand, I've got... Very, very special plans for Larry. I have some friends that can, well, let's just say, take care of the problem. That's if you leave him alive, of course. We'll just have to wait and see. I wasn't lying when I said I didn't know anything about your undercover work, if that's what you're trying to imply. All I can tell you is that there's more than a few people at mass who find Commander Akande to be a huge pain in the ass. I mean, the UC is aware that the Crimson Fleet is a problem, but it pales in comparison to the issues with the Free Star Collective. Ikande's loaded with big picture ideas, but not a ton of evidence to put them into action. And frankly, it's driving my superiors All crazy. May I have your attention, please? Wait a moment. Are you telling me that this scheme is getting so out of hand? It also involves the Crimson Fleet? That's all I need right now. Enemies on two fronts. Just because I'm helping you nail Dombrowski doesn't mean I'm turning my back on UC security. How else am I going to ensure that he ends up behind bars when all this comes crashing down? No, you can leave me out of your merry little band of pirates. Thank you very much. You better tell Dombrowski to run, because if you don't kill him, I will. Must be the one who's been accosting Claudia and Gabriel. I'm uncertain what you hope to accomplish here, but it appears we should rapidly enter into some sort of negotiation. You don't actually believe that I'd venture into such precarious criminal territory without a proper bird's eye view of the situation, do you? I'm uncertain why you've become entangled in this spider's web, but this situation demands swift and resolute action. Excellent, excellent. So, before we begin, let's review the facts. First, it's clear that you've obtained insider knowledge of my arrangement to defraud Galbank, the means and the methods perhaps, but not the motive. And second, I'm going to hypothesize that my compatriots are despondent regarding their share and have assisted you with this endeavor, hmm? Since we're speaking and I'm not at the reporting end of a bullet, this leads me to conclude that you desire something personal from me.
you may as well ask, is it necessary for the sun to set on Jemison or for one to wear a pressure suit when entering the vacuum of space? I pride myself on having an intensely thorough education, though I'd hardly call myself a professor. Though I'm sure that your All compliment also meant you were having please? trouble understanding what I've been saying. In blunt terms, you have compromising materials about me in your possession. The only thing I have to offer in return are my gal bank credentials. I assume that's what you've been angling for all along? Will there be much more of this? My head is starting to hurt. Well, I'm surprised you even posed that question at all. The answer is quite obvious. The last thing I'd want to do at this point is call attention to myself. Obviously, that wouldn't be my preference, but I have little choice. Hmm? Though, Larry Dombrowski will be mysteriously vanishing after this cruise, and possession of the credentials becomes ludicrous at that point. Blended. It appears we've reached an accord. Wait, I'm sorry. Let me simplify that for you. It sounds like we have All a deal. May I have oh, of course I trust please. you'll understand if I the ask for us to avoid any further contact. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to formulate how I'm going to utterly ruin two very annoying business associates. Good day. Stars is now in emergency status. Please remain calm and proceed. Well, looks like everything worked out. Just like we planned. I'm glad you feel that way. Just remember to tell Delgado how much I pitched into hell. You know, I'm still wondering exactly what you needed those credentials for. You feel like telling me, partner? Ah, so he told you to keep it from me. I see. I wouldn't want you to risk your position with the fleet like I did, so I'll just leave it alone. Anyway, I suppose there's nothing stopping me from rejoining the fleet now. It's been a long time coming. I owe you one, Dover Beach. All passengers, may I have your attention, please? Don't worry, it's not an insult. It's a very old Russian word for comrade. It's what I intend to call you from now on, so get used to it. And remain there until you receive further instructions. Nonsense. If there's one universal constant you can depend on, it's that Yevgeny Rokov always makes good on his deals. Always. Well, I suppose this is where we part company. Hopefully the next time we meet, we'll be aboard the key. Can we speak for a moment?
the time I wish to speak to you. If it weren't, I would like a chance to talk to you, if you are able. Hello. It has been a relief to be honest with you about my past. I appreciate your willingness to listen. But talking about this, remembering all those years has brought back some unsettling memories. Thank you. That means a great deal to me. I have told you that I spent many years coordinating with smugglers along the edges of the settled systems. There were men and women I worked alongside closely. 
and over time I established relationships. They were not of the promised, but I considered them friends. It describes the people of House Varun, we who have been promised to serve the Great Serpent now and forever. In exchange, he promises to care for us when he returns to his domain. Yes, I have found that to be true. It was, and is, still a surprise. You must understand. I was raised to believe that those who do not follow the Great Serpent do not matter. For they are lost, their fate is fixed and grim. And yet here were these men and women with hopes and dreams, delights and aversions. It felt like a small betrayal of my people, of House Varun, but I cared for my friends. And then... I lost them. It's not something I have much experience with. It was so sudden. We had met on a remote planet to transfer cargo. And zealots appeared in force. Seemingly out of nowhere. There was barely time to react. So many were cut down immediately. I believe my years of training saved me, got me moving when others faltered. I retreated to my ship immediately. But I left them all behind. Aaron Bascom and Jada Wong. They were my friends and I abandoned them. And in the years since, I have never looked for them. No, maybe. I, I don't know. It all happened so fast, and I've had so much time since then to replay it in my head. Wonder if I should have done things differently. In my time getting to know you, I have thought more and more of all this. How little sense it all made, how I never really knew what happened or what became of my friends. My connection to you has reminded me what it means to trust someone. To be there for them. And I can no longer live with not knowing. I need to finally pursue this. I would like you with me when I do. I do not know what we will find, but... I know it will be easier with you at my side. I am not sure I will find any comfort in it, but I think it is important nonetheless. I am not sure where they might be now, but I believe we should begin the search in Aquila City. That is where I last saw Aaron Bascom.
Hello. Welcome to the... <clears throat> the uh, Galbank Archives. May I see your credentials, please? Oh, uh, no. No, this is just their deep storage facility. All the current records are upstairs in the main facility. This is where, uh, where they put the older data onto long-term servers. Oh, no, none at all. I'm all alone down here. Yeah, yep, completely by myself. Well, I, I guess you're down here too, right? So <laughs> that's two of us now. Sorry, not trying to lie to you or anything, just, uh, yeah. Just one moment while I verify. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Dombrowski. Welcome, sir. Give me a moment to log your visit and then I'll unseal the archives. Me? No. Look. This is my first day on the job. Just cut me some slack, okay? I can't afford to lose it. Got a wife and kids to feed. Everything checks out. Give me a moment to log your visit, and then I'll unseal the archives. There we go. Have a wonderful day. Always worth checking. Never know what you might find in their pockets.
Always a satisfying moment to return to your ship. Hello, Captain. You want to kick back? Avoid the last over. Next time you see Bog, tell him to lighten up. Your buddy Rokoff is aboard the key. Told me everything had happened. Yeah, he won't shut up about you. Keeps going on and on. <laughs> now I remember why we kicked his ass out the fleet. Yeah, that'd be a first. All right, neighbor, you've made your point. Well, since you're vouching for Rokov, I guess we can give him another chance. All right, now that is out of the way, we can move on to the matter at hand. Crix's legacy. Speaking of which, let me see that data you copied from the Galbank archives. Ah, so the Galbank transport went down over Bannock 4. Bannock. Why does that sound familiar? Neva? Yeah, yeah, keep your panties on. I'm looking it up. And... I got it. Bannock 4. Let's see. Damn it. Bannock 4 is an EM-class gas giant. We can't even get a ship near the thing without frying every circuit aboard. Approaching that in, well, in any ship would be suicide. Don't know that one, huh? Well, pick up your pencil. There's gonna be a test on this later. EM class means the planet is given off a ridiculously high amount of electromagnetic radiation. We're talking off the charts here. Fly your ship anywhere near one of these death traps and you'll blow every single circuit on your ship. You'd be dead in space. Get it? Yeah, sure. We'll just wrap your ship in a ton of copper and launch you right in there. That ought to do the trick, right? Both of you shut up and think for a second. I'm sure Creeks hit the same roadblock. All we need to do is figure out how he got around it. This sounds like a goddamn waste of time to me. No, no, this all makes sense. The data says the transport went down over Bannock 4, carrying currency during the Narian War. There were ships fighting across the entire galaxy back then. It's not that hard to believe this one got lost that far out from home.
That's the spirit, Rook. That is the essence of the Crimson Fleet that has been slipping away lately. Neva, the Galbank data says the transport had a CBR-27 transponder. Can we track that kind of thing? Pinpoint its exact location? That transponder is military grade. We're talking ultra-bit encryption, constantly reshuffling frequencies. We don't have shit like that laying around. But... Before you get that pissy look on your face, I heard that the UC's been working on a ship signal decryption system called the Comm Spike. We grab that little beauty, and we'll be able to track anything you want. All right, here is the plan, so shut up and listen. Rook, I want you and Neva to put your heads together and get us that Comm Spike. I don't care if it's mounted at the top of mast. I want it. In the meantime, I'm going to find out more about this EM class gas giant problem. And I think I know just who to ask. Give me a little time to crunch the numbers on the comm spike with Jazz, and I'll point us in the right direction. We do or we die. That's the way Crix did things. And that is the way we should have been doing it for years. It's as simple as that. I promise? You gonna write that in your diary, little girl? All right, that is enough. We are in arm's reach of Krix's legacy, and I don't have time to deal with this kind of bullshit. Now, both of you, get the hell out of here and get to work. All right, let's get this over with. Follow me. It's a real job any day. All right, let's get right to it. Did you get the Earth Savior Award, or am I going to be very disappointed? because you'd be absolutely right. You see, everyone above you in the fleet is making more than you are off the same gig. That's why we're all fighting our way to the top. Understood? Good. Now, you might want to hand over that award before I have you tossed off the key. Just a thought. First of all, this is my section of the key, so I'm going to stand here for as long as I want. And second of all, I know all about that award and your deal with Neva. We don't keep secrets between us. Just throttle down and give her the damn thing already so we can get to work. Well, well, look at that. You followed my directions, and now you're going to end up with some credits in your pocket. Of course, it would have been more money if you hadn't blabbed about the damn thing to roll call. But that's on you. Anyway, here's your cash. Keep this up, and I might even start respecting you. All right, fleet. We've all got work to do, so let's get to it. Here to 
upgrade that ship of yours? require my assistance. Once we get rid of all the pirates, the galaxy will be there. So I heard there was a bit of excitement on the Siren of the Stars. Your handiwork, I assume? Nice work. Any specific evidence you picked up regarding criminal activity should be given to Lieutenant Toft after the debriefing. If the evidence pans out, you can visit those alleged criminals in our brig the next time you stop by the Vigilance. But for now, what do you have on Delgado and his little ragtag group of pirates? Yes, and I heard there were no casualties. Excellent work. Except for the ecliptic hit squad that you took down at the archives. You've taken care of that mess, by the way. Speaking of which, I assume you copied the information from the Galbank's computers. Let me see what you've got. So the legacy went down at Bannock 4. Bannock 4. Hmm. Why does that sound familiar, Doft? Bannock 4 is an EM-class gas giant, sir. There isn't a ship in the fleet that could safely get near that type of world. The Bannock system was the site of a significant battle during the Narian War. I had to do a research paper on the subject at the Academy. Good. That should slow them down for a while. Look, I spent all day listening to those idiots running in circles. Are you telling me I don't know my own job? All right, calm down, Lieutenant. Even if Delgado has an immediate solution to the EM problem, there's still the matter of tracing the legacy's transponder signal. Of course I am. We don't really have a choice in the matter. There are no shortcuts. The route you're taking to secure Crix's legacy for the Crimson Fleet is the only one at our disposal. If you suddenly change your behavior, they'll know something's wrong. I realize it's difficult, but I urge you to stay the course for now. 
In the meantime, we'll formulate a plan to ensure the Crimson Fleet doesn't get their hands on that money. They have information about the comm spike? <sighs> Damn it. I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that device, sir. No, you shouldn't be familiar with it. It's a highly classified project. It's an advanced signal decryption and tracking device that the UC Navy's been working on for years. How the hell did the Crimson Fleet find out about that? There must be an information leak somewhere, sir. It's the only thing that makes sense. I'll see what I can find out. Fine. This is what we're going to do. You keep playing along and go after the comm spike. Lieutenant Doft and I will see what we can find out about Bannock 4. My superiors are stubborn. They aren't going to authorize an attack on the key based on my flights of fancy, I've been told. We need more evidence that all the Crimson Fleet's plans will result in them actually getting their hands on this fabled cache of credits. I don't see the point. Crimson Fleet apparently has a pipeline of information flowing from somewhere within the UC military. Any attempt to move the comm spike would be a waste of time. We need to play this close to the vest. Perfect. Just stick with the plan and we'll see who gets to Krix's legacy first.